Last week in Switzerland, Davos, China's Xi Jinping spoke of new world economic order. And in Washington, Donald Trump inaugurated, finally, with his vision of making America great again. And these all together might have signaled a new opening of a new era of G2 competition. What does this mean for Korea as well as the world? We'll talk about that right here in this program up front. World Economic Forum, which was recently held for four days in Davos, Switzerland, came to an end. A lot of global leaders and renowned figures, including British Prime Minister Theresa May and UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, have gathered for the event to discuss various pending issues facing the world, including the gap between the rich and the poor, climate change and economic challenges. This year marks the 47th anniversary of the World Economic Forum, which has opened up conversations around the world about various different issues. And Chinese President Xi Jinping's participation has made the most headlines during this year's event. Xi Jinping has become the first Chinese president to attend the Davos Forum. And during the keynote speech, he emphasized the significance of globalization, and strongly condemned Trump's protectionism, comparing it to, quote, locking oneself in a dark room. Amid the concerns risen over the establishment of the Trump administration during the forum, Xi has garnered support from the international community by stressing the need to implement the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Chinese President Xi Jinping has strengthened his global influence by taking the opposite stance against the U.S. President Trump's protectionism and emphasizing the free trade. What kind of impact will such divided positions of the G2 leaders have on the global dynamics, as well as the domestic economy? Upfront discusses the outlook for the global economy and necessary measure for Korea amid the rising competition between the G2 countries. For today's discussion, we have Professor Jung Hyuk joining us here. He is from the Graduate School of International Studies of Seoul National University. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. And Professor Kim Ming Yun joining us from Sogang Business School today, right here. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Okay, lots of interesting topics to discuss today here. Uh, first of all, the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, uh, closing last week, uh, continuing on whole week and then closing last week. Uh, any observations, uh, first impression, the way you saw it, how it was different from uh, previous years, for instance? Well, the size-wise and uh, the participants-wise, uh, quite similar. However, the most uh, obviously uh, the the noticeable thing is a uh, Chinese leader, political leader, first participated mm -hmm. in the Davos Forum. And uh, also it tries to, China itself, tries to be the, emphasize mm -hmm. the, its uh, role in the global leadership mm -hmm. and shows its confidence to do so. And another thing, unfortunately, is the Korea's minimal participation <laughs> in Davos Forum as well. For the first time, Korea didn't really have our, for first time in a long time, Korea didn't have our Korean night whatever right. gatherings, right? Right, yeah. And the head of delegation was uh, Minister of Industry, I suppose. Right, right. that's right. right. So a little bit subdued presence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting observation. You, mm -hmm. From your perspective, anything to note? Well, Davos Forum has some characteristics. Basically, they are winners meeting. Mm -hmm. and all the leaders for all over, from all over the world, they, they get around, they're trying to set the directions for the world. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of a tendency they're going to show mm -hmm. in Davos Forum. But to, uh, this, this year is a little bit different. Uh, Xi Jinping was here, and they tried to get around and try to solve all the issues that we have in right. the global wide. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of a good approach for mm -hmm. Davos World Forum to be changed for the future. Especially uh, this time when the politics seems to be coming back to the world economy. Mm -hmm. 
uh, having gone through all these uh, turmoils last mm -hmm. year, right? So particularly important. And for that reason, I guess, uh, Professor Young, responsive and responsible leadership mm -hmm. was the main theme. Uh, what is your interpretation of that theme, responsive and responsible leadership? I think uh, there were two key words in uh, last year, actually. Mm -hmm. One was the increase in uncertainty, mm -hmm. and the other is the social integration. Mm -hmm. The global uncertainty really increases because of this Brexit and uh, unexpected mm -hmm. uh, Trump's uh, gaining power in U.S. Right. And also uh, the European Union's response mm -hmm. uh, would be uh, following the protectionism. Right. So the nationalism and the protectionism raises the concerns mm -hmm. of the political and economic uncertainty. Also, the IS and the terrorism mm -hmm. kind of raise the uh, uncertainty in right. the international politics as well. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, the fourth industrial revolution raised the issue of job insecurity. So, Which was a big theme last right. year, right? Mm -hmm. And those kind of uncertainty mm -hmm. to respond, the government or leaders mm -hmm. of the country should be responsive. That's why the word uh, responsive part comes from. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we observe the rise in inequality right. within and across countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, polarization mm -hmm. is not just an issue in Korea or US, it's kind of spreading. Right. That's why the government should be responsible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So to respond to those kind of two big agendas, responsive and responsible leadership is makes, required. Makes good sense right there. Uh, regarding that theme, uh, you know, Davos is kind of like a, the main face of multilateral uh, international cooperation that has defined our uh, work for the last about two, three decades. Would you say uh, we are facing, or the, those people at Davos recognize that maybe we are facing a new threshold, moving into a new era, maybe where multilateral cooperation is losing its uh, steam? Of course, yeah. Professor Chang mentioned all mm -hmm. the issues that we have mm -hmm. worldwide. But if you look at the issues for the worldwide, well, how are you going to solve them? Basically, we're going to require a lot of collaboration between mm -hmm. all the leaders who represent in Davos Forum. Right. They have to work together. Mm -hmm. But that's why they're going to say, okay, we talk about the leadership, we talk about the communication. Right. But, well, I think well, they're trying to collaborate. But mm -hmm. if you think about the achievement for the Davos Forum this year, well, they have nice try. But I don't think any significant achievement mm -hmm. from Davos Forum yet. So right. we have to see right. where, what will happen and what, can, what kind of issues can mm -hmm. be solved from Davos Forum. To be fair about that, I think for years at, uh, about Davos Forum, yes. the critics of the mechanism mm -hmm. uh, called it talk shop. Yes. Talk a lot, nothing solid comes yes. out. So you're saying this year was no exception. Well, as I mentioned before, where they can set the directions, right, but right. their job the is to solve the problems mm -hmm. in the global wide. Right, right. But I'm Fair sure observation, yeah. I, I agree with that. And perhaps their job is, after all this talking, yes. going back to their uh, individual countries and trying to come up with uh, certain solid actions, yes. perhaps, right? Uh, Professor Zhang, you mentioned Xi Jinping's speech. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you notice right there? I, I, not necessarily the content of it, mm -hmm. but the China's intention. What does it signify? He talked about the importance of uh, openness in trade. Mm -hmm. And maybe I think in some of the lines he implied the necess necessity for multilateral cooperation and so on. Mm -hmm. And what, are, what were some of the, uh, the backgrounds, important points in the backgrounds where he's coming from? I think uh, Xi Jinping really tried to uh, gain two things at the same time. Mm. Oh, one thing mm -hmm. is uh, he, in practical sense, yeah. uh, he tries to warn the U.S that uh, you should, should not uh, be imposing any restraints for the trade against China. Mm -hmm. Because U.S. is thinking about two measures, right. like uh, imposing the 45% of the tariff for Chinese mm -hmm. goods, mm -hmm. yes. and the other one is uh, it already announced it will review whether the China is an exchange rate manipulation country. Yes. Right. So uh, he clearly... Uh, says to U.S. that that's not a good idea. And also, if that actually happens, and there may be some uh, restrictions, mm -hmm. and then China needs to find other channels mm -hmm. of exporting. What do, you mean, what do you mean by that, uh, other like, channels? Like, uh, 
Europe or mm -hmm. the other Asia, uh, because the, that will clearly reduce the exports to U.S. Mm -hmm. And then the free trade clearly helps. So he's laying the background, mm -hmm. like uh, by reinforcing the RCEP and uh, its initiative of the free trade area mm -hmm. uh, among the Asia and Pacific, among APEC countries. Mm -hmm. So that can be very practical purpose. Mm -hmm. But the more important point, I think, right. the China is trying to uh, fit in the crack mm -hmm. that was created by the Trump's mistake or misjudgment okay. about the world economy and the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. There is a kind of vacuum now in global leadership. So real challenge from the second power to the well, first power? Right. Okay, okay. So that's a good opportunity for mm -hmm. China to fit in because U.S., well, at least for a while, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, gave up its mm -hmm. leadership in free trade. So mm -hmm. China would take that uh, okay. as to position mm -hmm. China itself as the global leader. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Uh, filling the gap or actually trying to lead the world as an alternative uh, the, the top leadership? What do you well, say? For the economic perspective, I believe that China mm -hmm. is trying to take uh, number one in the worldwide. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with, uh, with Professor Sean that mm -hmm. well, they, they're going to step, uh, step in and they're trying to be on the charge for economic perspective. Okay. But in my view, basically mm -hmm. where China is basically, they're trying to export a lot of products to U.S. Right. U.S. is basically the, their biggest market. Mm -hmm. So if, then what if like China cannot export their product to U.S.? But they have to absorb all the products that they manufacture in their right. domestic market, mm -hmm. including other markets like Europe. But I don't think the Chinese domestic market is not mature to absorb all their products. That's true. Right. So basically, they need U.S. Mm -hmm. But in my view, basically, where the China is, one the, is running the U.S. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of protectionism that they're trying to raise mm -hmm for Xi Jinping. They're mm -hmm. trying to protect the Chinese economy. I As you see. can see, Chinese economy, Chinese economy well, they, they are slow growth. Their growth mm -hmm. has become very slow down right, right now, right. and they need market, they need place to sell their products. Mm -hmm. So they need U.S. market too. So they're trying interest. to right. raise the issues. They're mm -hmm. trying to negotiate with Preventive. Mr. Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Preventive so action. it's our stand, right. and we're going to do this right now as mm -hmm. a Chinese economy. Right. And right. they're trying to warn the U.S. And let's work together. Uh, Professor Kim, about the China's leadership, yes. uh, some people believe we have seen some signs of hopeful signs the way China handled climate change cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of 2015 in Paris, mm -hmm. when the world reached an agreement, China actually played a proactive role, yes. actually leading the process and so on. Uh, do you agree with such observations saying that perhaps in certain areas like a climate uh, change cooperation, because it's China's uh, yes, interest, yes. which you mentioned before, yes. China will continue to play mm -hmm. proactive roles yes. as a leader? Well, I think they were they, in the economic perspective, they have economic powers and mm -hmm. they're trying to push for becoming a leader for uh -huh. the worldwide. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe that they have ability to uh, play a very important role in as a leader. But if you think about the Chinese, uh, Chinese economic situation, well, if you look at the, the air quality for Shanghai right. and Beijing, basically they, they have very poor quality. So why are they trying to have economic growth? They're mm -hmm. trying to work on those protect, environmental protections. So I think they're trying to catch the both of, both of them together mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay. Right? It's not that easy for, because like in the uh, organizational perspective, you know, if you care about the protecting environment, of course, well, they think it's a cost. Right. Basically, they're trying to add extra cost. Right. And of course, this cost is transferred to customers. Mm -hmm. So like Chinese, well, it, so it's not the easy job that they can accomplish as an uh, economic perspective, as it is the organization perspective. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to help to those uh, issues mm -hmm. to become a leader. But well, for the economic perspective, I believe that China is, is definitely the, uh, one of the G2. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you think about the Chinese society and any other system that they have, well, uh, as a leader, basically, you go out there in the global, right. and they have to solve some problems. Right, exactly. But if you think about the environmental protections, mm -hmm. well, are they solved? Not yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think, okay, China, well, you can become a leader for the economic perspective, right. but mm -hmm. as a leader, either a uh, leader for all these other different perspectives. Yes. I think it's not time yet. Mm, has some long ways to go. Yeah. 
But uh, your, one of your point you mentioned is in areas where China has a solid domestic interest, yes. such as bad uh, air quality, yes. which relates mm -hmm. to climate change and so yes. on, mm -hmm. they will act firm yes. as they perhaps a new leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, on, on related issues, Professor Chung Hyuk, uh, China's possible leadership that we could see, Koreans these days are increasingly, I think, uh, getting doubtful about that. When we see China acting on the third issues, alleged third issues, blocking Korea's cosmetic uh, imports into China, blocking Korea's uh, toilet parts mm -hmm. imports, mm -hmm. without saying that this is related to thought, mm -hmm. uh, only saying their regulations and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't this raise a big doubts and problems with so-called future Chinese leadership? I mean, leadership is supposed to uh, talk about principles, rules, right. and transparency here. And China is not really acting transparently. They're just uh, doing things that we suspect is a retaliation uh, regarding third issue, security issue, and then actions on the trade, limiting Korea's imports and Korea's entertainers from visiting China mm -hmm. and then barring or uh, trying to discourage Chinese tourists uh, visiting Korea. Is this a new kind of leadership? Will this kind of leadership work in the future? Uh, I doubt it too. Mm -hmm. uh, because as Professor Kim already pointed out, the China has an economic power, but I think economic power has two components. Mm -hmm. One is the total size. Right. The other is uh, GDP per capita. Mm -hmm. Because most of the institutional arrangements and mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. uh, is, has a very strong correlation with the per capita income level. I see. In that way, mm -hmm. China is like a less than a quarter of the U.S. So there are so many things that uh, they mm -hmm. need to uh, develop mm -hmm. to be the global leader. Um, maybe the most important one would be its lack of legal framework mm -hmm. and also the financial framework. Mm -hmm. That's why the China created the AIIB right. to make uh, for that up. Right. However, uh, still it's, it's really an infant stage. Mm -hmm. So uh, what China actually has is, yeah, to be simple, it's money. Mm -hmm. right, right. So it's sending the, uh, a message to the world that, mm -hmm. well, uh, we have money right. to buy and money to invest. Mm -hmm. So are you going to take me as a new leader? Right, right. Uh, however, uh, to really become a leader, money is just part of it. Actually, last uh, week, last Friday, January 20th, uh, Donald Trump actually inaugurated in Washington, finally, as the new president of the United States. So we'll take a look at uh, this video here, and then we'll continue on talking about what happened in Washington right after this. In January 20th, Donald Trump was sworn in as the 45th president of the U.S., through the inaugural speech, Trump delivered a comprehensive blueprint for the country for the next four years. The word Trump used most in his speech was American. He used this word nearly once a minute during his speech. Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. Trump has presented six major policy areas of his administration, including America First Energy Plan and America First Foreign Policy. And all of those plans have put America's interests at the top of the priority list. It has shown a beginning of a new era of America First under the Trump administration. However, during the inauguration ceremony, tens of thousands of protesters filled the streets of Washington, D.C. to oppose the Trump's presidency. Media outlets in both the U.S. and overseas have slammed the inaugural speech of Trump by comparing inauguration crowds for Trump to that of Obama and saying that it has encouraged division rather than harmony. Trump has criticized the media outlets by saying that they have deliberately misstated the size of the crowd at his inauguration. And it showed an empty field. And it said we drew 250,000 people. It looked, honestly, it looked like a million and a half people, whatever it was it was. But it went all the way back to the Washington Monument. That, as you know, I have a running war with the media. They are among the most dishonest human beings on earth. 
Despite the lowest ever approval ratings and strong condemnation from media, leader of a world power has still exerted a strong influence on the global market. In January 16, at the interview he had with an American business magazine, Trump raised a red flag over the rise of the U.S. dollar. Two days after his statement, one dollar exchange rate fell 7.81 in Korea's foreign exchange market. Also, global companies both inside and outside the country have announced their plans for large investments in the U.S. even before the inauguration of Trump. And it is expected to become a boost to the Trump administration. Along with the Trump's strong emphasis on America First policy, historical changes in world order are expected to take place after the beginning of the Trump era. We discuss whether the Korean economy can seize an opportunity amid the changing G2 leadership, along with the establishment of the Trump administration. Professor Jung Young, I know you need time to analyze what exactly happened at the inauguration last Friday, but uh, can you tell us your thoughts about going into the inauguration uh, before it actually took place? What were you seeing basically uh, in Washington or anticipation around the world in, um, in terms of Trump's inauguration? I think uh, in terms of inauguration itself, mm -hmm. Uh, the main emphasis, mm -hmm. clearly the just the social integration. Mm, the, that was the expectation yeah, going into it, okay. And, uh, Divide, uh, div uh, unifying the divided right, country, right. okay. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a, a wise kind of gesture mm -hmm. to not to raise the little detailed mm -hmm. uh, his pledges uh, that may divide the people in U.S. Mm -hmm. and across the world. Ah, okay. So uh, mm -hmm. social integration, mm -hmm. and but still, mm -hmm. the America first, right. make America great again. Interesting combination, right? Yeah. Like you're embracing uh, the possible unhappiness, but at the same time, you're making, trying to give you, share the message that you want to make America great mm -hmm. again. Uh, your observation about uh, Donald Trump's overall inauguration, do, do you agree with his efforts? I mean, first of all, yes. Professor Kim, uh, at the time of inauguration, he was going into the ceremony with the perhaps lowest ever, uh, you know, uh, rating yes. level yeah. in the polls yes. in recent memories, 44%. Yes. Yes. And that's uh, where previous presidents got to after about a year or two mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. later, yes. after coming right. into the office. Right. But he was actually getting that yes. kind of low approval. So what did you see? Uh, well, if you look at the uh, inauguration mm -hmm. ceremony, mm -hmm. well, the size, mm -hmm gets smaller, smaller. compared to the pre, uh, former president and the people who participate in the ceremony, mm. well, gets smaller too. Right. So basically, well, if you think about the Mr. President, mm -hmm. the President Trump, mm -hmm. basically, does he, I mean, is he welcome to become president of the United States? Ah, right, right. Well, but like, he mentioned a lot of things for the economic perspective mm -hmm. and he think about the foreign policy, but I think his first job has to, like as Professor mentioned, mm -hmm. right, think about where you have to integrate all those, uh, the class for mm -hmm. all the society. Like, as you know, the, if you look at the population of the U.S. economy, they have minority, right. they have a different race. Mm -hmm. And if you, if I, I mean, if, if you think about, if I can give the tre Mr. Right. President, I mean, right. the President Trump advice, mm -hmm. well, his job is to integrate all these people together first mm -hmm. and they try to work on the economy and they try to work on the foreign policies. Right, right. Yes. And uh, so what matters right at this point is what is going to happen uh, from this point on, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of worries leading into his inauguration and so on. Uh, in terms of the overall populism concerns mm -hmm. around the world, whether actually Trump signifies or or uh, represent the whole idea of the rise of populism. Mm -hmm. What do you see in terms of handling the populist demand in the United States? Mm -hmm. Are you expecting uh, considerable change on the part of Trump? Because a lot of people say campaign mode is different from governing mode. Mm -hmm. And in Trump's case, would you expect that same uh, kind of theory applies again? I think so. Mm. Uh, well, but uh, there may be some differences across time. Meaning the for the first year, right? I think he really tries to show that he consistently keep his pledges. 
So that way, mm -hmm. uh, his mm -hmm. campaign mode will mm -hmm. continue. Ah, I see. However, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's so clear that his economic policies are really wrong. Mm. And it will hurt the U.S. economy. Mm -hmm. uh, even, for example, the Wall Street Journal. Right. Wall Street Journal is really representing the, the U.S. business concerns. Right. Traditional Republicans. Right. right. But it criticized mm -hmm. uh, Trump's economic policies as, as a job killers. Uh, mm -hmm. Job killers. Yeah, job and killers. And job is Trump's job focus. Job is Trump's mm -hmm. right. Uh -huh. But uh, they expect mm -hmm. if uh, Trump's economic policies continue, mm -hmm. well, it'll kill all the jobs. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, the Moody's report right. expected that at the end of the, his first term, uh, the unemployment rate would uh, increase sharply. Wow. And also, the economic growth rate mm -hmm. would be just 0.6%. Through what kind of mechanism? Uh, what are the, you know, from business perspective, yes. what are the concerns about uh, Trump's focus? Trump is talking about yes. creating jobs mm -hmm. in the United States yes. and forcing companies to relocate and then uh, open, offer more jobs inside the United States. How could that lead to troubles? Okay, if you think, I mean, if you look at the history of the President Trump, mm -hmm. when he was a CEO, for operating his business for mm -hmm. a long time. Right. If you look at the characteristics for the CEO, well, they're going to push for the performance for their organizations. Okay. So I believe that Mr. Trump, well, they're gonna, he's going to push for all the performance that he can get for economic-wise and for the foreign policy. And he want to see... Visible, visible yes, results. he want to see some visible performance. And until he's going to see that, mm -hmm. he's going to push all this organization and his administration mm -hmm. to get the visible result as a I performance. See, I see, I see. But well, we are expecting that, okay, it's going to work or mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. We believe that it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. For in the short term wise, he's going right. to push for maybe a year, maybe two years, right. he's going to push for all this performance to get mm -hmm. the result. But if he failed to see this performance in right. a short term period, right. I believe that he's going to change some directions. Mm, and I, I believe that the Congress for the U.S., maybe mm. all the Republicans and other Republicans, well, they're trying to act as a mediator for mm. preventing Mr. Trump from going extreme cases. Mm. So I think, well, it's going to slow down. But mm. for a short period of time, I believe that he's going to push for visual performance that he can get. But in your view, when you mention actually uh, the Trump's focus on job creation may produce uh, negative results uh, makes perfect sense what Professor Kim said. Anything to add in terms of how Trump's approach to economics could actually produce problems? Well, the, <coughs> like the protectionism, for example. And what they were saying, yeah. Okay. Uh, ah. That's uh, actually, it may create some jobs mm. for the mm. white males. Mm. However, right. overall, it would kill jobs for others. Like a GM and carrier air conditioner. Uh, there will be visible jobs being created, mm -hmm. but there will be other invisible casualties as right. a result of it. Right, that can be one. And the, the protectionism is against this uh, comparative advantage mm -hmm. that represents the efficient allocation of resources. Labor is one of the resources. Mm -hmm. And okay. if you shield uh, U.S. against immigration, right. well, then the cost of Labor the... Cost. Yeah, it will yes. just rise. Mm -hmm. And then the, mm -hmm. there is no other way to cut employment. So in, through these kind of very clear channels, mm -hmm. uh, it will affect the uh, U.S. in a negative way. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. it will benefit some group of uh, people, mm -hmm. mainly the white males. And the, who were the and main uh, supporters of right. Donald Trump right. himself. Right. It could be smart politics, but yeah. bad economics, basically. Because it, it's smart, as you said, mm -hmm. because uh, Usually, those people were protected by the Democrats. Right, right. But Democrats has been failing mm -hmm. to protect the, those group of people. Mm -hmm. Right. Then Trump steps up, then, mm -hmm. then I'll do the job for you. And then he wants <laughs> to keep them as perhaps supporters for his next try for right. the, another term, perhaps uh -huh. in the longer run. Uh, on a macroeconomic yes. sense, Professor Kim, mm -hmm. the interest rate policy, yes. uh, what do you see in terms of Trump kind of flamboyant, mm -hmm. very politically minded leader mm -hmm. coming in? Mm -hmm. Uh, his interaction with the Fed, for instance, do you see a lot of troubles coming up? Well, uh, President Trump, basically, <coughs> they, he wants to make a lot of investment in infrastructure. Okay. And he's going to need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. so, low interest rate? Yes, but oh, well, okay. basically, well, of course, the low interest rate is, is trying to... What he to, wants. Uh -huh. He wants, uh -huh. but 
if you're trying to make more investment, he tried to increase the spendings. Mm. But well, fair cases where they are thinking of, okay, the growth of the U.S. economy is enough, and right. we're trying to raise the interest rate. They mm -hmm. already did mm -hmm. last December, right. so they're trying to expect to raise the interest rate uh, this year, maybe two times or three times. That's mm -hmm. the expectation, but we're not sure yet. Right. But, well, the Fed basically, well, they're trying to adjust the economic growth for the right. U.S. economy. U.S. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Trump's perspective, right. well, he's trying to boost up mm -hmm. as soon as he, he now becomes a president, where he wants to see some results, mm -hmm. and he's going to push for Fed. Okay, we're going to do this, and you have to follow my policy. Mm. But the Fed is not. So they want to see the U.S. economy in a more, like, I think it's more objective ways right. compared to Mr. Trump's right. view for mm. U.S. economy. So maybe, well, uh, they're going to have to work together, but I think the Fed does, it's not going to follow mm -hmm. the Mr. Trump's policies. Okay. <laughs> so it's very complicated dynamics, uh, lots of details involved yes. here. Just uh, lingering on just a little bit, uh, Professor Kim, uh, Donald Trump's action to urge, push U.S. companies to, yes. to uh, produce more in the United States. And I guess Hyundai Kia yes. uh, went along yes. declaring their uh, plan of investing five trillion mm -hmm. won yes. worth of additional mm -hmm. investment in the United States. From business perspective and economics perspective, how tenable, how sustainable is this kind of approach? Well, if you look at the uh, U.S. Uh, the product that mm. we mentioned, the Mexico is one of the key country that right. they can manufacture their products and sell their products to U.S. mainland mm. with very comparable price mm -hmm. because they have cheap labor, cheap labor, <laughs> mm. and they don't have to pay the tariff. Now that uh, President Trump is uh, pushing all this, well, I mean the U.S. Multi US organization as well as multinational organizations right. try to establish their manufacturing plants in mainland US. So, well, th that's how that, uh, Mr. Trump is going to push the Mexico. Well, mm -hmm. if you're going to manufacture in the Mexico and trying to sell, I mean, the ex export to the US, right. you're going to get the tariff. Well, it's kind of a very different right. policy that all these, uh, all these organizations have to do. Right. And the, uh, Kia has mm -hmm. a manufacturing plant in, China, in Mexico, mm -hmm. and Samsung Electric also has, they have a manufacturing plant in Mexico too. Okay. Now, what he's going to push mm -hmm. all these organizations to make mm -hmm. a lot of investment in U.S. mainland. Okay. As you know, Hyundai Kia, they have manufacturing plant in the Alabama, right. basically. But they're trying to make more investment in uh, research and development. Mm -hmm. They're trying to hire more people, new facilities and new mm -hmm. equipment. Mm -hmm. However, well, if you think about the, all these manufacturing firms, mm -hmm. all these manufacturing plants, mm -hmm. well, you think about how many people right. are working in actual manufacturing plants. In these plants that's fast, um, uh, me mechanized, and automated, right? On robots. robots. And all right. these machines. Can, well, if you think about the employment imp impact, mm -hmm. I, don't, I think it's going to be very limited. I see, I see. But in the Trump's perspective, we're mm -hmm. trying, OK, the Hyundai Gears decide that they're going to make an investment on mm -hmm. the US mainland, and GM is also making an investment in US mainland. Right. Well, it seems like, OK, the public mm -hmm. is going to consider Mr. Trump is doing a very good job. They're trying to, he trying to boost the, our jobs right. for uh, U.S. American, basically mm -hmm. the white American people, mm -hmm. and basically well, he's doing good job and he can raise his popularity Once from a perspective. Right. But for the economic impact, mm -hmm. it's very limited and mm -hmm. it's gonna give a lot of troubles for the organization. Ah, As you know, right. if you're trying to make an investment in mainland, right. there's high cost for labor. Right, exactly. Well, so political will, visibility, yes. which may not yield much of economic gains in the long it's run. It's trouble to all the organizations. Right. right. Professor Jung Hyuk, uh, let's uh, switch our focus briefly away from Trump and Korea here. We know Vietnam, not Korea. Vietnam is the country that produced the largest number of Samsung phones. Mm -hmm. And it's been a while since Hyundai Kia have been producing more cars overseas than in Korea. Mm -hmm. With this uh, Donald Trump pressure coming in, and we are concerned about other countries following similar methods, right? forcing businesses to produce more in their countries when other exporters or uh, want to export more items into their countries. Should we be concerned, Korea? What can we do about it? Uh, well, I actually, I have a little different perspective okay, from please. the other people, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I take it as a positive way. Why? Well, in terms of labor crea uh, employment creation, yes. uh, it may hurt uh, Korean economy. Mm -hmm. However, as Professor Kim already pointed out, mm -hmm. staying in Korea, the job creation size would not be that big. However, 
by uh, going into the U.S. market, right. the Korea needs to face mm -hmm. the competition force with other uh, advanced uh, automobile companies. Okay. That will improve mm -hmm. the productivity mm -hmm. and the capacity of like a Hyundai Kia, for example. Mm -hmm. And that would be a big benefit. Uh, we are having a great discussion here and we are getting closer to the end of the discussion. So we have to look at the big picture relating to uh, relating what we discussed at the beginning of the discussion and mm -hmm. then what we are discussing now. That is putting together China and United States here. A lot of people are concerned about the possibility of conflict between these two G2 powers mm -hmm. in the future. I guess people are talking about, as you mentioned, uh, exchange rate mm -hmm. manipulation issue, which is a potentially very conflictual trade. And perhaps uh, strategically speaking, mm -hmm. North Korea, mm -hmm. South China Sea, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of issues. Professor Kim, what do you see? Uh, uh, would you like to be a fortune teller in terms of <laughs> what could happen this year? What do, what do you see? Do you agree? Do you well, take the side with the majority view that actually there will be a greater likelihood of conflict between China well, and the United States? I believe in, the, in terms of Mr. Trump, well, mm -hmm. I think there is, will be a lot of conflict between the uh, U.S. and China. Mm -hmm. And the Korea's view, uh, we are in the middle of the, between these two G2. Right. And, well, for the economic perspective, I don't think it's going to make a huge impact for Korea's economy. Mm -hmm. Because like all these organizations like Hyundai did, but yeah. he's, they're going to make uh, some, they're going to adjust their strategies okay. to reflect what Mr. Trump is trying to do mm -hmm. in the U.S. mainland. Of mm -hmm. course, the Chinese pers uh, economic perspective too, but they're going to do their jobs to make an uh, adjustment on their okay. policies and mm -hmm. their strategies. But what I'm concerned is that the political issues. What do you mean? Because between the U.S. and the China, and mm -hmm. of course we have North Korea for the nuclear perspective, right, right. I really worry about these political issues mm -hmm. are transferred into the problems in the economic perspective. Like what we like are seeing, issues. Right, well, thought and then the yes. cosmetics yes. and then the tourism and Because stuff. it's going to make okay. damages to our, our Korean economy. You see that well. to continue? Uh, the, would you say China yes. is learning any lessons, perhaps? China, but is there a possibility Chinese well, people getting unhappy about what Chinese government no, is I, doing? I don't I mean, Chinese perspective, I think they want to become number one. Okay. I think that's my, I mean, that's my uh, perspective uh -huh. on the Chinese, what they're trying to do as an economy and what they do trying to political review. So, well, they're going to make a conflict with the U.S. And I hope that this political issue is going to transfer into economic issues. Do you agree with the perspective that Chinese action that we see allegedly in the thought related issues is something that's going to continue into the future? Is it I good for so. China? I mean, does China really believe what they're doing serves their national interest? No, that in the long run, yes. But right now, uh, I think China knows mm -hmm. it hurts their economy. Mm -hmm. But uh, they're investing by sacrificing current returns. By creating fear? Uh, if you well, don't behave well with China, you're going to have the That's the not payback. a bad way uh, for China. Mm. China takes their strategies from their perspective. Mm. So we cannot say that you should take perspective for Korea's yes. <laughs> right, right. behalf. Right, creating so, fears. Yeah, okay. that's, uh, because they don't have any experience mm -hmm. to handle these kind of issues. Mm. China uh, just came back to the international community right. that's very why I was recently. That's talking about the history. Yeah. Right. Right, so right. they don't know how to handle these issues. Unexperienced very power immature. on the rise. Yeah. Right. Immature, right, right. right. And Personally, I agree, absolutely. And the, about the, the trade issues here, mm -hmm. they're talking, I mean, looks like TPP is gone uh, in a trash can, some pessimists say. Yes. Who well, knows, it could be revived, yeah. but for now, right? Yeah. Trump doesn't like it. Tra TPP uh, around the Pacific region, yes. led by the United mm -hmm. States, is, mm -hmm. seems to it's be kind gone. of in a coma, if not it's dead. Uh -huh. uh, some people are saying RCEP, uh, another mm -hmm. trade pact led by China, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, as an alternative to TPP, uh, as a long-time watcher of this issue, Professor Chung, what do you see? RCEP, is it a kind of like a no-nonsense alternative to TPP? Actually, RCEP and TPP are very different. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The TPP mm -hmm. is trying to implement right. the principles of free trade. That's why uh, China created its own. Mm -hmm. RCEP allows many flexibilities. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not still settled. Mm -hmm. Because uh, No, if you're talking about broad principles, it, would it be easy to settle? I mean, the TPP is difficult because the uh, United States has interest in implementing different kind of U.S.-focused standards of 
you know, patents, environment, labor, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But China, if you're talking about, I don't know much about RCEP, but mm -hmm. uh, according to what you just said, uh, if RCEP is all about broad principles, mm -hmm. we have to respect uh, open trade, free trade and stuff, will it be easy to implement? Uh, not really. No? <laughs> because uh, each country uh -huh. has a different competitive advantage. Okay. So product by product, you should de de determine its tariff rates. Ah, but they, don't, they cannot agree among those uh, many <laughs> countries. Mm -hmm. yes. The U.S. position originally, before mm -hmm. Trump, right. was that, well, just keep to the principle, just free trade. Mm -hmm. U.S. was confident because it has been a long-time leader uh -huh. of imposing those yes. principles. Right. However, mm -hmm. uh, China mm -hmm. uh, couldn't do that because it doesn't have any experience implementing that. So it just, uh, it's a regional FTA, mm -hmm. but there is a bilateral flexibilities. Mm -hmm. so, so it's more complicated. Yeah, it, it's very complicated. Finalization. Right, right. Uh, but unfortunately, the Trump uh, just gave up that advantage right, right. <laughs> for his political purpose. Very helpful and interesting yeah. observation. Uh, Professor Kim, overall, this, uh, what's happening around the Pacific region here with the uh, kind of United States exiting the TPP game, China struggling with RCEP game, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. What's Korea's uh, stance? Uh, what, is, what, does, uh, what kind of stance should we take here? Well, I think one of the key members for uh -huh. this um, the Pacific area is Japan. Like Japan, when Ooh, Korea is uh, having great relationship with Japan <laughs> these days. <laughs> yes, when, uh, when Mr. Trump gave uh -huh. up the TPP, Japan is kind of, okay, where should I stand? In the U.S. side or the China side, right. because like, they're trying to be in the middle. But mm -hmm. in the Korean's perspective, well, I think we kind of in the same position with Japan. Like we are in the middle of the China and we are in the middle of uh, the U.S. Both markets are important for us. But Japan is a yeah. lot closer to the United States, can you yeah, say? Yeah, of course, yeah, they do. But mm -hmm. so in the, our perspective for the Korean perspective, I think, well, we have to do the separate strategies. We have to deal with the China mm -hmm. in a separate way, and we have to deal with the, uh, deal with the U.S. separate way. Mm -hmm. We have to set the different strategy to mm -hmm. deal with those kind of different policy mm -hmm. and different markets. And of course, there are all these organizations have their job to do, but our government has to try to support, mm -hmm. but they try to maintain a good political relationship. Mm -hmm. We talk about the SAD, right, right. where those political issues mm -hmm. can make a bad impact mm -hmm. on our economic perspective. So I think that's kind of job that um, we have to do as a government and mm -hmm. all these organizations like the many, and major companies like Hyundai and Samsung, well, right. they're going to set up the different strategy to deal with the different issues mm -hmm. for China as well as the U.S. Ah, okay. Yes. Uh, Professor Kim just mentioned very important points here. Mm -hmm. And I want Professor Jung Hyuk add a little bit more in terms of how Korea should position itself here uh, and broadly in business strategy, but also perhaps in trade side as well. Korea was dithering about uh, what we are going to do about uh, TPP and maybe Korea should be happy that TPP dilemma is gone now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should continue on working with China on RCEP. That's a small perspective. In a broader perspective, positioning Korea ourselves in this uh, broader dynamics of Pacific economic conflict and cooperation, what are your suggestions? First thing Korea should do is uh, it should escape itself from the framework of this sandwiching position between U.S. and China. Okay. There are other countries, okay. Japan, as you mentioned, Russia, and uh, they need to uh, actually recalibrate all these countries, their, their strategies. Russia is fine, I think, but with Japan, mm -hmm. every time there is this issue coming up, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps more often at home here in Korea, is there something we got to do about dealing with Japan uh, within ourselves? Professor well, we, we really need to utilize the tension. Mm, what do you mean? I mean, the, the Japan's position right. is, is, as you said, uh, the, it's much closer to U.S., mm -hmm. but Japan is trying to approach Russia. The, well, the U.S. would like it, half and half, I mm -hmm. guess. And uh, there is a single goal trying to isolate China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for, for that part, uh, Korea may have some edge to utilize it by creating more cooperation with Japan. Mm. Uh, of course, there is a very thorny issue of uh, Dokdo right. and also this sex slaves, days, yeah, sex slaves right. and uh, 
Japan's uh, response mm -hmm. to these, uh, this gold statue mm -hmm. is very uh, immature, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, when your partner is showing some emotional response, mm -hmm. that can be an advantage. Okay. Rather than something that you complain. In practice as well? Because, I mean, In Korea practice has been is really hard. very tough on Japan. It's really hard. Hitting Japan all the time. Of course. But yes. I just wonder if there's any homework to do mm -hmm. at home in Korea, the way we, Korean public, sees Japan mm -hmm. and deal with historical issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been working on changing Japan. Yes. But in international relations, there's a limit to, in terms of changing other countries' behavior. Right. And sometimes it's better to adjust your own perspective yes. here. So I wonder whether that kind of, yeah. I mean, may not be a, a topic <coughs> of our discussion yes. here. Mm -hmm. but and uh, like uh, between the conflicts between China and yeah. U.S., mm -hmm. there's uh, actually a big danger that uh, China and U.S. may uh, slip their tension into Korea. For example, uh -huh. the U.S. may right. want to designate Korea as the first exchange rate manipulation yes. country before they do that for China. Oh, do you see that as a possibility? I, I, I see the possibility. Really? Okay. I do. Okay. And uh, because China... this is a Trump administration, <laughs> none other than that. Well, <laughs> interesting. Okay. Uh, and uh, China, mm -hmm. it, it keeps saying about thought, mm -hmm. but is thought really the uh, issue between China and South Korea? Right. No, it's a relationship between China and U.S. Yes. yes. But China yeah. is kind of uh, trying to put that responsibility yeah. against Korea, mm. yes. trying to make the frame it, it, as a like a U.S. Right. Uh, rather than the U.S. China, but it's a China Korea relationship. Uh, so, sort of like a shake off the right, platform, right, basically. Right. So China, Korea should be very careful and thoughtful, yes. mm. but uh, they shouldn't follow either of these pressures from either side. I see. I yeah. see. Very important observation. Now uh, we are getting to the perhaps last point of our discussion here. Yeah. We have all these uh, uncertainties coming into the new year here, the China factor, U.S. factor. Mm -hmm. And we discussed about the job creation mm -hmm. and uh, economic concerns here in Korea. And this year happened to be the 20th year anniversary. Should we call it anniversary? Of this, what we call here in Korea the IMF crisis, 1997 yes. financial mm -hmm. crisis. Professor Kim, uh, what do you see in terms of the road ahead for Korea? What do we have to do? What are the things that we have to keep in mind when we think about what happened 20 years ago mm -hmm. and what did what we achieved and what we did not achieve to, during the past 20 years? And when we consider the variables outside, what are the important points to keep in mind in Korea well, for Korean economy? Well, right now we are facing you know, a lot of like fair, a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. or other issues. Right? We talk about the external issues like uh, free trade for with Trump. Right. And we talk about the. Uh, Ec uh, domestic economy issues like household debt, mm -hmm. and we talk about the uh, high unemployment for the young people. Right. And, but of course, we said that we go overcome the IMF crisis. And, but my concern is that, well, when I think about the economic's future, right. um, they think, well, economy is getting worse. So basically for all the people and organizations mm -hmm. where they don't want to spend money. Mm -hmm. They want to save, save, save. And basically the spending is a very key, important issue to right. boost our economy. Mm -hmm. But those kind of tendencies, well, we're trying to uh, weaken our mm -hmm. Korean economy. Are you saying yeah. the psychology is the problem and some of the uh, you know, economic observers have been well, saying? We are facing very different issues and mm -hmm. it's going to make an impact on the, all these Korean people. Would you too. say perhaps what's called uh, population cliff is one of the concerns? That's why people are not optimistic about the economy? Well, I think uh, all the economic issues that we talk about, we talk about the industry 4.0 mm -hmm. and all these technology issues, but it's going to, and the low population rate, of course, it's going to make a huge impact for mm -hmm. our future of U Korean economy. Mm -hmm. So I think, well, um, Basically, it's going to make an impact on the fundamentals of the, our Korean economy. Professor jong yes. uh, as Professor Kim mentioned, the pessimism on economic outlook is a well-known factor here in Korea. Uh, are there things that we can do, perhaps, uh, to deal with or address the pessimism? Of course, the pessimism, as Professor Kim pointed out, is rooted in all these fundamental causes and challenges here. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there any uh, observation that you want to share in terms of how we deal, want to deal with the main engine, that's kind of main factor that's holding us back, the pessimism for the economic future? I think uh, Korea's 
growth and development yeah. has a very unique feature, which is, uh, well, we remember the heydays of fast growth in 70s and 80s, right. Uh, right. but uh, that's not the only thing that characterizes Korea, which is, uh, uh, as a developing country, mm -hmm. Korea uh, really stood up and it uh, maintained its growth for 60 years. For that record, Korea is unique. Okay. Most developing countries, mm -hmm. they started as low, but some of them succeeded, some mm -hmm. of them failed. But among the success countries, right. they could maintain their growth only 20 to 30 years. Okay. You may not believe that actually the, in six seventies, 70s in mm -hmm. particular, mm -hmm. the most rapid growing country was an African country. I see, I see. Because uh, it's a relative, yeah, ratio is Gabon. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, but it could maintain only 25 years mm. and it failed. Mm -hmm. And the Latin American countries, Brazil, mm -hmm. Argentina, Mexico, mm -hmm. their growth rate was quite okay in the 80s. But the important point is Korea right now, our potential growth rate is perhaps around 2%, 2% some people yes. say, right? That's my point. Ooh. Korea is mm -hmm. going into the, another phase of development. Okay. You so we should not be pessimistic about it? Not this at is all. something that happens to everybody? Yep. Okay. The, uh, think about it. How the U.S. became the world leader? Mm. By maintaining 2% of growth for 100 years. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. So the mm. Korean minds are too much kind of uh, addicted to this kind of 5, 6, right. 8, 10% of growth. Right. Uh, no country can maintain such growth. Mm. So uh, I think it's a good opportunity to balance uh, not just the market mechanism, mm -hmm. but we do need mm -hmm. the wider range of social development as well, mm -hmm. like uh, legal uh, clarity right. and also the government uh, governance uh, transparency mm -hmm. and the firm's governance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we thought that it may be just mm -hmm. a side issue, so let's grow first. But we now learn mm -hmm. uh, they are not side issues. Uh, we began with more kind of like a perhaps alarmist observation of what's happening in China and the United States in today's discussion, but I guess we are ending with more optimistic and hopeful <laughs> uh, perspective for the future here. So I want to thank big time Professor Jung Hyuk from Seoul National University and Professor Kim Ming Yun from Sudong University. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. And of course we want to thank big time our viewers who have joined from all around the world to listen to and understand what's happening here in Korea and what it means for the world as well. And next week, next time, we'll also talk about the important issues here in Korea, which means, which has implications for the world as well. So we want to ask you to come back to this program up front. Until then, this has been Kim Byung-jun. Thank you very much.